Saturday Night Show has got everyone in a spin. Both me and Alison have been on it, haven't we? Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm very excited about this. It's, it's Michael McIntyre's The Wheel, but with some very, very mixed Well, results. when we went on it, oh, yeah. <laughs> when we was on it, definitely. Oh, oh, oh. oh. a lot Wheel of fun. Veterans. A lot of fun. Hey, Michael, how are you? Good morning, Wheel Veterans. How are you? I love that <laughs> montage. <laughs> you know what? There's very few people that just make my heart swell. You are one of those people, yeah. Michael. I get so oh, excited. You always make me laugh. And you, you, you too, Alison, have inspired me. I love the way you had all your makeup in your top. I thought that was hilarious. It's down I've, here I've today. Actually... It's behind the sofa today. I haven't got it down the top. There it is. But I just thought Carry we weren't on. getting off that wheel. I just thought, you know what? It's, I might as well have my makeup on me. We weren't allowed makeup artists. So I thought, you know, just in put there, my makeup down, down there. there. There's so much room. Done. <laughs> well, I'm well, just following your example. I've actually been following your example. I've got a few <laughs> things here. I've got my thermometer, <laughs> face masks, of course. <laughs> Absolute essential. <laughs> that is brilliant. I think that's it, actually. Yeah. I might have lost sound. I can't hear you. Oh, there you are. Hello. <laughs> oh, Michael, honestly, this show, The Wheel, this is one of the... I actually said to myself, when my agent came to me and said, you're going to do The Wheel, I went, no, I ain't got time for that. As soon as they said Michael McIntyre, I was like, I'm doing it. Whatever it is, oh, I'm really? doing it. And I'm so happy that I did it. This show is so uplifting. It's the show that we so need oh. at the moment. Do you love doing it? Well, it's it's fun, fun to play. Well, of course, you know, we developed it over the summer in lockdown on Zoom. I was mainly, you know, working on the format, playing it with people over Zoom. We had this wheel that came up and just members of the production staff. And we just built the format and then we cut a couple of run throughs. So we had no idea how fun it was going to be. But it was sensationally fun to play. I loved hosting it. And of course, the whole thing, just not by design, but by accident, is a socially distanced. We're all we're all <laughs> safely apart from each other, and you can't really tell. And uh, yeah, it was amazing. And both of you are brilliant on it. Um, well, obviously, Dermot, Dermot did won. really well, wow. didn't he? Dermot I was don't actually know any of that. Uh, the worst bit of the show for me is yeah. when you rank the celebrities from top to bottom. Yeah, uh, I was middle, which is okay. It's not bad. But you were like the top, and I could just see your face. You were like. Yes, I was quite happy. I was quite happy, <laughs> I have to be honest. Well, you see, of course, the celebrities had no idea because of the show's never been on air, so they didn't really know that was going to happen. No. And that was always my favourite bit, too. In fact, when we watch it at home, I always pause it for my family to guess who'd come top and bottom. <laughs> and sometimes it can be very surprising. I mean, last week, poor Judy Murray came top, but everyone <laughs> kept shutting her down uh, all the time. Um, whereas you never know. I mean, sometimes more predictable. I have to say this weekend's, which is probably my favourite, uh, apart from your both of your shows, <laughs> one of my favourite shows of the series, um, there is a very funny gentleman who comes. Oh, gentleman or lady who comes last, but it, it's very funny when people get a lot wrong. And in fact, on yours, Alison, was Maura Higgins, who was... She was so much fun on the show. It was priceless oh, was to watch that. But the worst thing about <laughs> our show was absolutely nobody won. And the funniest thing was, Michael, when you did that monologue at the end, it was completely made up about the fact that we were trying to cheer people up and now we're depressing people because no one actually won any money. It was so funny. My, I kept saying when we were developing it, I'm like, let's just keep playing till someone wins. But actually, you can't do that because what if it keeps going on and on? <laughs> And on, and then we have to like you know subsequent programs may run late. The match of the day starts at three a.m. You've just got those three chances, and unfortunately, uh, it was a disappointing ending. But it sort of makes it more dramatic when you know there's a chance that nobody could win. So you know, I think after that show, it's like oh right, this could really not work out. I so yes, it's great, all part of drama. I had a great week. Friends. Leo uh, won, I think, seventy-eight thousand pounds. Oh my, wow. yeah, yes, a huge sum of money. He gambled. He gambled. He was brave. And, uh, yeah, no, he was brilliant. And, in fact, on this weekend's show, I don't want to give too much away, but a lot of money gets compiled on it, because I can't tell you what happens in the end, but it is... Because um, it's all fortune with, you know, whether you get spun in in gold and, and, and how, how the gameplay actually develops. But, yes, that was a big win. And, uh, yes, and, of course, the BBC love it when nobody wins because there's no money we, we have to give away. So that's... <laughs> <laughs> Michael, did you... Um, obviously, you came up with the idea, it's your idea, but... Um, uh, you know, you're a stand-up, so did you have to think twice about doing getting involved in the game show? Yes, I don't think I was going to host it initially. I just came up with the idea as a game show format. 
And then we were going to pilot it. But no, I was going to carry on hosting the big show on Saturday nights, which is much more what I do, you know, in a big theatre with a big audience and it's an established show. But then when we couldn't make that show, it seemed like a no brainer. It's like, let, maybe we can make this one. And I've actually found that I've, I've probably loved it as much as, if not more than any show I've ever made, because there's, well, you, were, you both were there. There's just so much to play with. You know, I don't really have to worry about. Comedy just comes out of out of the questions, out of people getting things wrong, just out of the fun. And, you know, there's just a lot. There's a lot for me to literally roam around the middle and, and enjoy. And uh, it's exciting. And my family really like it, which is which yeah. is the main thing. We love it. <laughs> I've actually got you to thank for the fact that when I go in the street now, everyone calls me Hallelujah Hammond. <laughs> <laughs> because of you, you, you named me Hallelujah Hammond. Hallelujah Knuckles Hammond, because of course there was that moment <laughs> when you failed to press a button on a touch screen. Right, so um, I've, I'm got, glad I've got a confession to make, Michael. I actually yes. got the question wrong. It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't my nail. You're right. <laughs> I lied. I didn't know what to do. I lied on the telly. But I didn't know what to do. I, I, I pretended that I slipped and it was my nails. I hadn't. I just got the question wrong, babes. <laughs> well, what I found, though, work. on it that show is you've got, to get, you've got to get your answers in quick because oh, totally. you lock down those answers really quickly, don't you? Yeah, totally. Yes. Um, I've got to yes. ask you, if you was on the wheel, Obviously, my special, my specialist subject that I got wrong was TV. What would your specialist subject be? Well, Dermo surprised everybody by coming in with World War Two, which wasn't the most well, like, obvious. Well, what can I say? I, I have said I'm incredibly bad at general knowledge. I know nothing. I come all these Zoom quizzes. I come last. I just seem to sort of know nothing about everything, which actually helps the show because I can't give any clues or anything. I know a little bit about sport. In Trivial Pursuit, I tend to go orange or pink. I'm a sort of sport <laughs> entertainment guy. But, you know, anything literature, anything history, uh, nothing. Nothing, but, but sorry. it's good I've that you're the host, babes. Things. It's good that you're the host. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I would, I would, I would really fare badly on that. I think you're looking at a Maura Higgins part two if and, I was on that wheel. <laughs> and, Michael, lockdown-wise, um, did I read you've taken up hairdressing? Is that right? <laughs> No, I haven't taken up hairdressing. <laughs> well, we all took up hairdressing in the first lockdown. No, I cut everybody's hair in my house. I was good at it. You know, you, you must have done this yourself when all the hairdressers was closed. So, yes, I did a bit of... I cut my boy's hair and I dyed my wife's hair and she was very happy with it. And it went very well. I had no idea she wasn't blonde. That was a, an alarming day when uh, she became more and more brunette throughout lockdown. Um, but, yes, no, I did a good... My wife cut my hair very badly, though. I shouldn't probably say this. It poor, she tried her hardest, but she used that... Oh, there she is. Yes, not a great hairdresser, wonderful mother and wife. Aww. She used the clippers and she went up really short on the side and then did the rest of it okay, but I had this sort of gap in the side of my head, which luckily my phone actually could fit perfectly into. <laughs> so I did my, my daily exercise. I had to quickly pretend I was on the phone because I had a shaved head uh, of the iPhone 10 size underneath it. And speaking <laughs> of your phone, is it true uh, to, to increase your step count, you're just throwing your phone across the, the lawn and, or, or, or across the room, is that right? I, I do go for my daily exercise, as we all must do, um, which is actually quite good in the cold weather because you can see people's breath, so you actually know where to avoid. So you see, you see two people walking in front of you and they're breathing, and you're literally like sort of ducking <laughs> under, under the breath. <laughs> then someone's walking towards you, <laughs> and you're like, no, I can't go there. So that's helping actually, and hopefully that'll lower the spread. Um, but yes, no, I've, I've, I've got this. This uh, steps thing now on my phone, and it tells me. I mean, it's not going very well. Yesterday was good, nine thousand. Um, today, um, I've only just come into my office, but I will go for a walk. But I have found if you throw it a great distance, it does think you've walked there. So I do that. So, you know, do you ever do that with your pedometer when you need to top it up at the end of the day? Like my wife's always doing that. She's like, oh, I just need another thousand. And she starts walking up and down the stairs for no reason at all. <laughs> oh, I'm not quite that guy. I just throw the phone. Michael, it's so exciting. Michael McIntyre's The Wheels on tomorrow, um, Saturday night, BBC One at 8.30. I love this show. Make sure you tune in. It's been an absolute you pleasure seeing you, darling. On it. Thanks, Michael. And it's, it's great, great to, to see you on this show. You're wonderful. Thanks, babes. See Bye, you soon, guys. Michael.